With Assassin's Creed Odyssey just around the corner, and hopefully Cyberpunk 2077 just on the horizon, we are hearing a lot about how huge and diverse these new video games are. Boasts about how open and free you can be, the multitude of different tasks you can undertake. Promotionally, it sounds fantastic. I begin to ask myself, are single player games becoming too big? Gone are the days when single player AAA games stood their own ground with breathtaking experiences before the belief of tacking on a debatable online mode was brought about. Luckily, it didn't start appearing on every developer's to-do list. Questions more common these days are, how long a game will last? How long will it take to complete the campaign? What brings players coming back? In fairness to the developer, these are some of the most asked questions from their fan bases, adding pressure to deliver, meet and exceed expectations. But is it right for today's games to expand the world beyond a straightforward story? Or is it just being done to tick off another checkbox of expectations? Done correctly, I thoroughly believe that under the right circumstances it can be a good addition to the correct franchises. A quality example of how to correctly have a huge open world single player game is The Witcher 3. It features a vast array of locations each bringing a unique quality with it. You can recognise each location at a distance from a size, elevation and structures within. Whether that be the city of Novigrad with its bright architecture spreading far off into the distance, or the crow's perch fortress with its rundown and murky look situated in the wetlands. Exploring is rewarding and provides unique opportunities, many of which most players would have missed. The line is blurred where a story mission ends and a side quest begins. Everyone remembers the Bloody Baron side quest, and to be perfectly honest has made me forget what the main story even was. You are rewarded for straying from the path to the next objective with hidden locations, loot and rememberable faces. Providing us experience is what keeps players engaged as the content is constantly changing, providing fresh experiences and information. On the other hand, if a time isn't taken to consider what a player will enjoy, we end up with empty landscapes, repetitive quests and repeated assets. Assassin's Creed Origins was a breath of new life to the series, but its huge new open world didn't come without compromises. 61 hours into the game, and I can't complain of a side quest, but I'm yet to see all locations. Given a range you can use Senu, I've seen some of the locations I'm yet to step foot in. More precisely the region called Quatara Depression. The clue was really in the name, as the landscape just appears barren and wasted. It's almost like it was added to fill a gap in a world too big for its boots. Let's not forget that common task filler over the past few years are fetch quests. Again, done correctly it can introduce new characters and delve deeper into the stories of the fantasy world. But if you waste the opportunity to make me collect feathers and complete delivery quests, I just don't have the patience. With news coming out that Assassin's Creed Odyssey's side quests are more similar to the quality found in The Witcher 3, it proves that inspiration and doing it correctly can be a great addition to a game. I have relatively high hopes for Odyssey as Origins was a true shock to see such an improvement to an aging franchise. Other games to come to mind, such as Beyond Good and Evil 2. Whilst technically not a single player game from what I've heard, I expect the narrative to be top quality. But with the promise of multi-board exploration, is this driving focus away from memorable locations filled with detail and characters, or are we just going to end up with empty planets with a few key locations? Up until recently, Norman Sky was not a great looking game, yet it has an infinitely sized universe which sounds fantastic. In reality, was it worth it? Someone out there might fully appreciate this game and explore it to their heart's content. But in an infinitely generated universe, you're bound to see repetition. I feel the hype originally on the infinite universe alone took a lot away from the base game, which left a bitter taste in a lot of people's mouths. What if Hello Games originally decided not to come up with an infinitely generated universe, but rather a smaller detailed universe? Sure, the game might not have generated the hype it did, but could it have been a greatly received game? After all, you don't paint a masterpiece by throwing buckets of paint at the wall, you apply it with fine precision. Metro Exodus appears to have struck a chord. It has opened the game up drastically allowing free roam and exploration, which is a big change from a very linear style it had previously. Yet the developers know that being directed down a certain path was one of the game's very strengths. Keeping the open world segmented allows Metro to stay focused, whilst offering players the opportunity of freedom, even if it's more limited than other games. 
This says to me that the developers of Metro Exodus 4A games knows where the limit between staying strong to a proven formula and the ever-changing requests of the player should meet. They have broadened the approach to the game, not strayed away from it. Do I think single players are getting too big? No. With such a multitude of different genres of games, and the demand for more that all gamers want, we are spoiled and games suffer for it. The time has to be taken to bring games to life correctly, and adding to the story that should have ended is potentially time wasted. If a talent is there to bring the quality to expanding a world, why shouldn't a deeper story be present? After all, more of a brilliant experience could never be a bad thing. The real question we should ask ourselves is, has this story been dragged up too long, or should it have ended on a high note? With the inevitable downpour of new games coming out this year, is it better to have 10 games you try to finish in a year's time? Or would it be better to have 10 games you've finished and had a great experience with 